All right, welcome back to Snow Falls Farm. We got a little unboxing here today. So, I ordered this on eBay because I finally blew up my Husky 142. That was after I put a fresh muffler on it, of course, and a new uh, chain pump, chain loop pump. So I got the uh, Power Sharp blade and uh, chain on there, which is awesome. But I'll have to do a rebuild on that because it's dead. So what we got right on top, we got the uh, sheath for it, 20 inch bar, eh, maybe not, maybe 19 and a half, I like usable length, pretty heavy though, manual. <laughs> Is that a case? It's like a bag for it. I've never seen that before. I don't think we'll need that. What else we got? A little uh, styrofoam stuck on our tool kit. Looks like a carb screw the tiniest little scrincher tool I think I've ever seen. Little Allen key. Oh my gosh. Look at the little, <laughs> look at the little log dog teeth. That's cute. Oh, we got an extra spark plug. Okay, that's pretty handy. GDS L7T. Cute little guy. Look at the gapping on that. Looks like an extra pull cord. And last but not least, the tiniest little chain file I think I've ever seen. Cute. All right. Hey, Moxie, raining out. Also got a little mixing bottle. It's like 10 ounces, maybe. It says 40 to 1 on here. So you can mix your uh, two-stroke oil and gasoline right in that, I guess. Maybe that's how big the tank is. Fuel mixing bottle. Cute little thing. And we got the power head. I'm kind of curious. I've heard people say that these are actually all the same displacement. This one's supposed to be a 62cc. So we got a nice cast, maybe magnesium casing. Pretty heavy duty looking exhaust, dual port. Is the oil fill? Is it retained? Oh yeah, it is retained. Oh, that, that's kind of... A little oxidation happening in there. That's going to be impossible to see. Is that actually going to seal? Oh, it's got a rubber seal on it. Feels pretty good. Gas. Gas tank is all plastic. Got a nice retainer for that. That's cool. Feels like it gets a good seal. Is this a priming bulb, I wonder? Got adjustments here. Low and high idle. Off and on. Choke. No throttle lock. 
I guess, just choke. What's the air cleaner look like on this? So this is a Kucher, I guess you'd pronounce it. 62 cc. I got it for around $145. Free shipping from Amazon. Prices changed quite a lot though. I noticed while I was looking at them. Don't lose that. Pop. There it goes. Okay. All right. That does not look like an adequate filter. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. You can see right... I don't know if you can see right through that, but I can see right through that. It's just a mesh. Internally, we got their carburetor, spark plug, easy to get at. That fits in there pretty good. That's kind of a fiddly thing to get on there. It says on the handle here, warning. Never use pure gasoline. Mixed fuel should be used. Mixture ratio, gas two-stroke oil, 25 to one. 8,500 revolutions per minute. Three kilowatt power plant. I think it's rated for three and a half horsepower according to the website. The listing. Doesn't look like it's got much vibration mitigation. Uh, it's got the uh, Husqvarna style chain brake, looks like, built into the cover piece. That's a uh, and sheet metal. Chain tensioner looks pretty solid though. That's all metal. Retained in plastic though. This, what is that, like a chip deflector? Chip mud flap there? I mean, it's not that different from my Husky really. The clutch. Tight. I don't know, there's a lot of metal. There's a lot of metal on that. Did I see any chains? Aha! Uh -huh. Yes. Let's take a look at that. That's pretty sharp. And greasy, that's a good sign.
tons of wood when you get cut here. So I've been waiting on this chainsaw for a long time. We should probably use our uh, official sprincher tool, huh? Got a full load of logs still out there. Waiting to get sawed up. burn around 10 to 12 cords a year, so it doesn't really stop. Jeez, this is going to stretch a lot. Just backing the tensioner out a little bit. on there well. There's a couple of, it looks like, areas that have to line up just right to get this scythe blade on. When I got it, it was loose already in the package, so. Just kind of get that in there a little bit so it doesn't pop off on me. It's kind of hard to get it with those nuts to tuck down in there. So where are we getting fitment issues here? Is it my chain break? break I think. Hi Moxie. You're all wet. They can't see you can they? It seems like I'm just talking to myself over here. She's got a doggy door just off to the side there. Yikes, is that really how hard that locks up? Yeah, man, oh man, that is a serious chain break. Gonna need 62 cc's just to Get the chain break to activate on this thing. Alright, I think I got it in there. I got these. It's tough down in the recessed pocket to get these uh, nuts to tighten up. Definitely a weird fit thing going on here. I'm hoping that I can snug it down. But now my bar is probably in the wrong spot. So there are two, there are two chains in the package, which is cool. I don't have any other 20 inch bars so I might run my 16 power sharp though that thing is just too convenient yeah you know what that is still not right something is buying him up is it that little mud flap thing? I think it is. Oh, it is. Why on earth? You know what? I 
think this has an adjustable oiler. Uh -huh. Just noticing. Alright, we should probably get our chain tension just a little bit more. Just as a side comparison, here's a normal scrunching tool from a real chainsaw. That's just a little push and loop. Keeps this surface in there. Good to moved up. Uh, here's the uh, power sharp diamond cut for the uh, for the weirdly sharpening saw. This will not work on this kind of chainsaw at all. Totally different profile, totally different uh, chain on there. But if you're cutting a lot of stuff on the ground that's a really handy tool. So we don't have anything in it. Let's just see how it turns over. Yep. Choke on. Wow, that's stretchy. Is that for real? <laughs> that's weird. I don't know if you can see that on camera. But I'm pulling it all the way to here. Is it like a... What is it doing? There's a weird connection between the uh, where you're pulling and the engine. <laughs> I don't know. All right, well, we'll have to mix it up some gas. It says, uh, boy, that, that is a flimsy cover for sure. Looks like you can break it off at different lengths. Let's measure it now that we get on the saw. Yeah, 19 inches. That's not too bad. I'm gonna break that first time out. That's okay. So I'll mix up some fresh fuel for that. Side to side comparison for the Husky. A little bit bigger. Husky's been around for a long time. I've been mixing this one 50 to 1, so I'll have to make some new gas for this one since it wants 25 to 1. She's gonna blow some smoke for sure. Doesn't feel 
that much heavier. Good reach though. I can stand up almost and it just barely comes down to the ground. The nose of it. Saw overall is 35. I cut my wood uh, 24. So it's right about where the C is. Yeah, this little Man, is my sharpie here? I would mark that. When I'm lining up my wood, I'll make a cut, and then I'll lay the chainsaw down, and if I sight line down that little that little ridge right there in the case, I'll know where my next cut's going to be, and I can bring the saw down on the next cut, and so on, down the length of the log. I, my wood boiler likes to burn about 11 inches tall. My wood boiler likes to burn a 24 inch stick. That's, it's pretty happy with that. This Husky was a pretty crappy saw actually. <laughs> uh, all kinds of oiler problems. Uh, really susceptible to the carburetor getting gummed up. Uh, I've changed the recoil on it a couple times exhaust burnt out on it uh, really bad at throwing chains hard to get the tension right i mean it's not a professional saw it is a husky but it's like a homeowner husky i really want to get a rancher but i can't afford to get a rancher you know you have a saw blow up on you you got a whole truckload of wood to cut i really hope this thing can do that cut up the rest of that for me i like the grip it feels really solid. I don't like the pull start though. Safety is good. Down on the top, unlocked. Yeah, I don't know. I'm optimistic. Although it is 110 decibels, it says on there. So, but we'll give it a try. All right. We'll mix up some fuel and we'll get that ready to go and give it a try. All right, let's see if we can mix up this 25 to one mixture. Oh man, how am I gonna hit that? Uh, well, it wouldn't be a day of the week without spilling gas or oil, right? Oh, it's windy outside. Alright, if I'm reading this bottle right, we should put it up to 10 on that, and then fill the other side with uh, two-stroke oil. Of course, this is assuming I'm reading this correctly. Which, we don't really know if that's the case or not. Two ounces. I mean, uh, thirty-two ounces. All right, so 
nuts. Oil's in. Gas is in. What do we do? Do we tilt it? Is that how we mix it? Where do I put the gas cap there? there. works. Definitely still oil stuck on the oil side. All right, we'll get the, uh, I like to put my chain lube in first before the gasoline anyway. If you always put your uh, chain lube in first, then you don't ever have to worry about running your saw without chain and bar oil. I'm pretty sure this bar oil I got at the convenience store was just like 10W30. Like it looks like just regular oil to me. So, but it is pretty sticky. You know, that stickiness helps it ride right around the bar keep everything all greased up. I kind of want to give it a couple pulls to make sure that we're getting the, uh, the oval. That took quite a lot of chain oil. You know, it'd be good to get the chain oil on chain before we run it. We could just spray it. It was definitely grinding pretty hard. This thing, if this chain break comes on, I'm telling you, it's going to break my arm when it kicks back anyway. tank and is it actually mixed <laughs> that's like the right color they uh, definitely don't sell true fuel in uh, 25 to 1 though That is, <laughs> that's a lot of oil. All right, so, yeah. We didn't use it all. All right, we got some left. What was it 10? 
10 plus, you know, the 32 ounces on the other side. pulls to get the chain lube in there and just check to make sure we're actually getting the chain lube. All right, so got the choke on full. <coughs> on. Already some stretch on that chain, huh? That well, seems pretty responsive. Definitely blows a lot of smoke. Got good ventilation in here, though. So, but we'll run it a couple more times. Try to get the uh, chain tension upright. But yeah, she's got really good throttle response. I mean, it's got a break in still, but it seems to start up pretty easy. Feels good in the hand. Nice balance, not too heavy. Feels like she's going to rip through some wood, though. We got some hardwood to cut up, too. Some beech. Some ash. A little bit of maple. All right, boy, it is windy out there. I might get some new stuff to cut down here. Windy and cold. I wish it was snow, though. That would be much better if it was snow. All right, well, new addition to Snowfalls Farm here. Definitely going to help us stay warm this winter and next winter, and hopefully the winter after that, getting all of our wood cut up. And... Uh, getting ourselves ready for our, uh, for heating our whole house with our hot water heater and oh my gosh there's arrows on the handle is that showing you <laughs> what direction to uh, hold it there is a little bit of uh, isolation to it though I mean it, it really does feel good in the hand Started right up though. I mean, I got a couple pulls with the choke, and uh, she's ready to go. Still don't know if I got this plate on there right. Oh yeah, she was throwing oil all right. Got some dripping off there now. All right, we'll get some video of it cutting wood here as soon as it's not pouring rain outside in the wind. <laughs> 